Hi everybody, it's Mark again, and I hope that you're uh, enjoying the video set uh, Cuckoo Clock Repair for Beginners. I'm getting a lot of positive feedback on it, and uh, our, I, I feel the next step is to teach you what each part does on a on a movement and to, to tell you what each of the parts are called because if you don't understand the way the parts work then you're never going to be able to fix an issue in a clock and so um, with that I have a video set out there already it's a two-part video the very first part of the um, first video I was explaining an issue and it confused a lot of people so I thought I'd go ahead and make a uh, one complete video now that I have a video editor and uh, as long as I keep this um, under an hour I think I could do it <clears throat> but I'll be using this book there's a couple of diagrams <clears throat> in the book that tell you what the parts are called so I might be pausing to get you the right part uh, the medication I take messes with my mind and I, I have trouble finding the words sometimes so anyway um, this is, like I said, is going to be the next video of explaining the parts of a, of a movement. So sit back, grab a cup of coffee, relax, and enjoy it. Before we get into uh, the parts, like I said, you'll need something like this or a bowl. Uh, eventually you're going to want to get these legs and you can get them off time savers for like $26 what you do you attach it to the movement uh, just Mike has got a video he uses these things all the time you attach it to the movement and afterwards you can hang it on the wall to test your movement and that way you don't have to have uh, something like that or like that or like that but uh, the most common movement is a regular uh, it might be pronounced regula I don't know but regular and Herbert her and there are some bad off and some AMS movements but we're gonna be discussing regular and Herbert Herr, um, and I'm going to show you an AMS movement, but they're all the same parts. Every one of them has got the exact same parts on them. It's just that where they're located. Now, here's an AMS movement, and the way the AMS movement works is the gong goes off but you will see on this ams movement that the um, high note lift lever is on top where typically the gong is on top then the low note lift lever which is the short lever and then the high note lift lever is on bottom but with the ams movements the gong is on the bottom the high note lift lever is on top and the low note lift lever is on is in the middle and when i trip this the gong is going to play first it was still in the middle of sequence so let me get it out of that sequence now trip it the gong is going to play first Gong, high note lever, 
and then the low note lever. It's just the high note lever catching on this wire. We'll do it again. Uh, gong, high note lever, low note lever. So, but this is an AMS movement, and in the in the group pages, both group pages, I got uh, pictures of plates, and you could find those plates in the featured section of my group pages if you subscribe. This is a regular 25 one-day movement. And how you can tell it's a one-day movement is by the following. This is the great wheel. The great wheel is the ratchet wheel. And this is the time side. Looking at the movement from the rear, the strike side is on the left side. Time side is on the right side. Great wheel, second wheel, and third wheel or escapement wheel. And that is how you can tell it's a one-day movement. This is a regular eight-day movement. It has a great wheel, a second wheel, a third wheel, and then the escapement wheel. It has an extra, extra wheel in it. There's actually one extra uh, wheel or, or piece, I should call it, in an eight-day movement, and that's that piece right down there that you should be able to see it. But we're going to set that to the side. Uh, what I will say about an eight-day movement is if there's any bushing wear whatsoever, you might as well go ahead and put bushings in because your clock probably will not run. So I'm setting that to the side. I'm going to grab a Herbert Herr movement one quick. This is a Herbert Herr movement. And I have it stuck. There we go. The biggest difference about the Herbert Herr movement is not only the way it's set up, but is the way the, the cuckoo quits ticking. And the Herbert Herr movements, and I don't have the arms on them, the Herbert Herr movements... The eight-point star wheel is inside the movement. Here it is. But the Herbert Herr movements have got this piece right here. And that is what gets the cuckoo to quit cuckooing. If this piece is not set up right and the pieces inside are not dropping right, then it will never quit cuckooing. And there's a lot of missing parts with this clock. So uh, I just wanted to point out the difference in the Herbert Her is it's got the eight point star wheel inside the movement. And it has this piece right here to get it to uh, quit cuckooing. And then there's going to be levers that are on the outside to to uh, to trip the cuckoo sequence. Getting back to this. Again, you have to know exactly what the parts are called. So once you got the movement out, you have to take it apart to clean it. And so um, we're going to start doing that. And I'm going to be pausing this video some because 
I'm going to have to do some things off camera because I'm not going to be able to to um, to uh, do some of this on camera because I can't see over this camera. You have what is called the rack. This right here is called the rack. On newer movements, they went to a rack and snail system. This being the rack arm, this is actually the rack that has all these notches in it. This is what counts the hours. And it, in sequence of it counting the hours, this tab that comes off this rack, the space between this arm and this arm has to be just right. And this tab has to be bent just right or your clock might be counting 13 and 14 hours when it should only be counting 12 hours on the 12 o'clock or it might count 12 hours on the 11 o'clock because this tab and the relationship between this arm and this arm has gotten bent out of shape so this is the rack system, uh, count well system this is what they used to use in accordance with the NAWCC posting and a message that I sent to the NAWCC, I asked them when they quit using the count wheel system and went to the rack and snow system. And the answer was, there was no definite time period for each maker, but by 1955 or give or take, they had all swapped over to the rack and snail system now i just recently noticed a a clock that sold that it had a date on the door of 1960 but it had a count wheel on it so it might have been a uh, uh, a leftover movement that was on the shelf but they swapped over in the 1950s uh, 1955 and later uh, from this system to the rack and snail system. This is what counted the hours. A lot of the uh, American clocks and older um, wall clocks and parlor clocks have this kind of system. Um, you have this arm that drops in these notches. And as it goes around, it counts the hours. I don't have the lever suggested but this is a count wheel system uh the russian clocks have a count wheel system uh popo and um Mikan clocks have a count wheel system not all of them but some of them do getting back to this the rack is what counts the hours the snail is what is what tells the rack how many hours to count each one of these tabs on the snail this is called a snail if you look at it it looks like a conical snail shell but it's called the snail the relative position on the minute arbor of the snail is what tells is what helps tell the time this being the one o'clock position this being the 12 o'clock position there are you guessed it 12 spots on this snail uh, to help count the hours this being the one o'clock position That was the half hour. It's going to drop on the two o'clock position. As you can see, it this tab from what is called the 
the rack stop lever is now in the second notch of the rack to count one, two. On the half hour position, the rack stop lever always drops to that first notch to count the half hour. Okay, so uh, let me pause this, take the snail, the, sorry, the rack off. Um, it's held on the place by clips. And so I got to pause this so I could see those clips. In this case, it was held in place by a piece of wire, which works. But again, this is the rack. And when you clean off this, take a toothpick and clean all the gunk that's inside that hole to allow it to drop freely. We already talked about the snail. This being the snail, same thing. Take a toothpick off. The snail is what the hour wheel, hour hand fits on. This is called the minute wheel with minute pinion. And it is held into place by an E-clip also, which already took it off. This washer is what holds the snail down onto that. Without this washer, the snail will slide up and down this shaft. The purpose behind this, because the purpose behind this is to rotate the snail. Older movements, and I have a video where the the minute wheel with minute pinion, that's what this is called, is connected to the time side great wheel. And the once you connect it, it Sorry, it's, I don't have the parts on this. But this is where it would be. And then something similar to this without the snail would go on top. And then the purpose behind the minute wheel with minute pinion is to control the, the uh, shaft of how it rotated. And if you're hands was just dropping or if they were too tight then there would be a compression washer underneath this minute wheel with minute pinion on the older movement but it, it it worked differently in the older style movements than what it does on the newer style movements on the newer style movements it is connected to a fixed post this post doesn't go to anything underneath and the big wheel connects to the pinion gear. The smaller gears are called pinion gears and the big wheel connects to the pinion gear on the minute arbor with minute pinion. And that connects the snail to operate the snail. But it's controlled through this. So if your snail 
is not turning see your minute hand is not turning but it's taken away this shaft right here could be loose and it has to be has to have some in shake in it so if it's too tight if it doesn't have any in shake that could be causing this to slip because this gear right here just can it's fit on and so your clock could be taken away with your minute hand not turning and it could be because this doesn't have any end shake or maybe it has too much end shake causing this to slip on that uh, had a case recently they had an issue of exactly what I just got through telling you the clock would tick away but the minute hand wouldn't turn and it was because of this piece here was too loose I believe in that case okay now we have to talk about Well, we're still talking about this lever right here. There are two tabs on this shaft. One is longer than the other one. This is the half hour tab, and the longer one is the hour tab. As this shaft rotates, this one of those two tabs catches what is known as the lift lock lever that is this lever right here and the lift lock lever raises the rack stop lever which is this lever right here and in turn The rack stop lever is what tells the rack is what allows the rack to drop. And so the rack stop lever tab walks up the rack as the wheel is turning. Or should I say, walks down the rack. This lift lock lever, if your clock is not counting, is not cuckooing on the half hour, or cuckoos too many times on the half hour, or it's not cuckooing on the hour, it's probably because the relationship between this arm and this arm is not right. And also, there's a tab on the the lift lock lever that catches this uh, piece right here, which is for the hour and the half hour, as you could see. So again, this is the lift lock lever, which raises the rack stop lever. The rack stop lever, when it's done cuckooing, 
this is not exactly how I want it, but it's good enough to explain to you what I need to explain to you. When it's done cuckooing, a few things happen. There's a pin on the third wheel warning uh, wheel. That pin catches this tab. At the same time frame, this pin goes into what's called the gathering cam with gathering pen, but I will refer to it as a Pac-Man. It looks like a Pac-Man, and so I call it a Pac-Man because it's easier to say Pac-Man than gathering pa cam with gathering pen. There's a pen on this Pac-Man that lifts the rack. If your rack is not lifting, this pen could be bent away from it. So you might want to look at that pen. That's the first thing that I would look at if the rack is not lifting as it's doing its thing. So when it's done cuckooing, that third wheel warning pin hits this tab on this rack stop lever. This shaft goes into the Pac-Man's mouth and I like for it to go into the center of the Pac-Man's mouth. And even though it's stopped right there, I would rotate this Pac-Man's mouth to put this into the center of its mouth. And the last thing that happens is there's another tab on the rack stop lever, which is right here. And that tab, you should be able to see it. There's a lever right here. And that tab hits that lever, which causes this to go away from that to allow it to, this is called the cuckoo bird arm and the cuckoo fits on there sorry i had my camera in the wrong spot this is called the cuckoo bird arm and the cuckoo sits on there and so uh, that arm comes out to allow the cuckoo to come out of the case when it's done if everything is is working properly that arm goes back inside which allows the cuckoo bird to go back inside and the item that this tab on the rack stop lever hits is called the cuckoo bird locking lever which it has a notch in it which allows the cuckoo bird to come out but as soon as that tab hits that cuckoo bird rod locking lever it allows the cuckoo bird to go back inside and I'll show you what I'm talking about see I'll do it again cuckoo bird comes out it's that lever and cuckoo bird goes back inside so if your clock is not cuckooing on the half hour it's more likely it's the uh um, the problem lies in this section right here. The distance between this arm or this arm. And then if it's spread open too much, it will not allow this 
arm to raise. And so it will not allow it to cuckoo on the hour. If it's spread open too much, see, I got this thing held into place. I'm turning the gears. It's the same thing. You know, I got it held open. But if, if, if it was spread open too much, this arm here would be touching this tab. And so it would not allow it to cuckoo ever. So once it's spread out, uh, closed enough is when it allows this, this, when this comes up, the clock goes into warning. And then as the third wheel warning pin goes away from that tab is when it cuckoos and it allows it to rotate. So we're going to go ahead and take this lever off, which is again called the It's called the lift lock lever. And the whole purpose of the lift lock lever is to lift the rack stop lever. Now, another purpose of the lift lock lever, if you have a musical cuckoo clock, it has this arm right here on it. And in this case, it has this arm right here on it, which, um, puts the uh, music box in warning. And so uh, not all of the movements have got that arm. This is a musical cuckoo clock um, movement. And so in this case, there's no clips that hold the thing on. This arm holds it on. Typically there's eclipse are those compression clips. And this is the compression clip that takes that special tool. And I've got videos on making a homemade special tool. So once that, um, that is off, I can pull this away. Again, lift lock lever. The rack stop lever has got a spring on it. And this is only for the regular movements. This spring helps um, lower this rack stop lever. Without that spring, it could slip cuckooing. Again, these normally have clips on to hold them in place, but in this case, because it's a music musical movement, it has this shaft right here. And once I unscrew this, I could take that off. And I'm a smoker. I had to uh, light up my cigarette. I should have told you from the beginning, uh, and I will tell you uh, in all my videos, if you're working on a clock, take pictures. Take picture prior to taking this apart. M look at your pictures, make sure they're clear. You wouldn't, <laughs> I was working on a movement once, took pictures, didn't look at my pictures, they weren't clear enough. 
I had a heck of a time trying to figure out how to put that movement back together. So take pictures all the way around. Front plate, rear plate, and all the sides. Take a video as you're taking it apart. You'd be surprised how many times I've looked at a video to help me put something back together. This is called the Pendulum Leader Suspension Wire. I typically take these off prior to taking the movement out of the clock. This suspension leader wire should be straight as an arrow. You do not bend this leader wire to make any adjustments. And if you look at all these movements that on my desk to talk to people about, none of them have a pendulum leader wire on that because I don't want to bend them up. I take them off, I put them in my drawer. So I took the music lever off like i said these things typically have clips on them to take them off if they have the compression clip it will be on the outside of the plate if there's an e-clip it will be on the inside of the front plate to take them off but once you got the clips off you can take these off I never ever take this Pac-Man off the only time that I take it off is if it's not on there right in the first place when I am working on a movement I do a function test and in that function test, if the, the um, I'm going to put this back on just for this section right here. During, during that function test, if the third wheel warning pin is hitting the tab on this lever and the pin of the rack stop lever is fell dead center of that Pac-Man I leave it that Pac-Man where it's at because if you take these things it's made out of brass if you take it off put it back on take it off put it back on eventually you're going to wear out that hole you're going to have to put a bushing in there and you don't want to do that it's a pain in the butt so don't take it off um, I tell you what I do, what you do is totally up to you. It's your clocks that you're working on. This is what I do. I'm just the um, teacher. You're the student. The student can do whatever the heck the student wants to do. But the teacher did not tell you to take it off. The next thing that you want to do is to take off this, what's called an eight-point star wheel. The purpose behind this eight-point star wheel is to lift the, the gong lever, the, high note, the low note lift lever, and the high note lift lever. It's easier to take this movement apart with this eight-point star wheel off. Older movements have got the eight point star wheel has got a screw on it you loosen up that screw and the eight point star wheel should slide off if it doesn't slide off easily put a little bit of pressure on it if it still doesn't slide off put some lubricating oil on it 
and walk away for 30 minutes or so uh, because it's been a while since it, the wheel has been taken off. The newer movements does, uh, do not have screws in the eight-point star wheel. They still come off. It's a pain in the butt. You could take this movement apart without taking this eight-point star wheel off, but you have to come down and slide the back plate over And when I, uh, you gotta, you gotta, it takes a little bit of finesse to put it on without, with the eight point star wheel still on there. It's just a lot easier to take the eight point star wheel off. And when you put the eight point star wheel on, when you're all done putting everything else back on, you want to put the eight point star wheel to where it doesn't matter which tab that you choose, but choose a tab and make it have a slight clearance between one of the tabs and the lever for the gong that hits it and then tighten up the screw. Do a function test and make sure that it it's still there the way you want it because when you're done this shorter lever is called the low note lift lever that lifts the uh, wire that's connected to the low note lift bellow when you're all done with your function test if the low note lift lever and the gong are in the same uh, section of the eight point star wheel it's wrong so you loosen up the screw move the eight point star wheel to where the tab is just barely missing the gong lever and then tighten up the screw again the high note lift lever and the low note lift lever share the same space between tabs. The gong is in its own section of the tabs. It's called an eight point star wheel because if you count them, there are eight points. So anyway, loosen up the uh, screw. And take the eight point star wheel off and it would be a lot easier to uh, to take the movement off and to put the movement back into place I'm going to connect these feet because I want to show you what the movement is supposed to look like uh, when you take it apart. So stand by. Okay, now I have the feet connected. I can put the uh, put it down and and uh, take the movement apart. I don't like using pliers to remove the nuts. That's why I have a nut driver. I'm ready to take the nuts off. If you use pliers, you could damage the nuts when possible use a nut driver now some people will take the hammer off and the gongs the the the, the hammer off and the high note and low note lift levers i do not The wire for the hammer has copper wiring and it's kind of fragile. 
Um, I'm a firm believer if it's not broken, don't fix it. Now that I have the nuts off, if I'm careful, I could take the plate off and all the gears will be there. This is called the verge and crutch assembly. This section right here is called the verge. This and this is called pallets. There's an entry pallet and an exit pallet. When you go to uh, oil up the movement, you'd want to put a drop of oil, a minute drop of oil, on both this pallet and this pallet. And that's something else that we'll discuss when we go to putting a movement together. These are typically soldered. This crutch assembly is typically soldered into the verge. Do not bend this back and forth. Do not bend this at all. What you adjust is this section right here. I call this the foot of the crutch assembly. The foot should be at a 90 degree toward uh, angle toward the rest of the wire. The foot should be open slightly. That way you could see the pendulum leader wire bounce back and forth off of it once you got it um, when you're trying to put it in beat. The section that you're bending is this. This very middle section. You're putting one finger here, one finger here, a thumb here, and bending. That's why you're bending. If you got to go the other way, you're putting... You're, you can use your different hand and bend it the other way. Do not bend this section up here. You're only bending the middle of this wire. And you don't want to bend it back and forth too much. It will break on you. You could purchase these at Time Savers for like, I don't know, a buck fifty to two dollars fifty cents, something like that. They're not that expensive. And they will say whether it's for a one day clock or an eight day clock. An eight day clock it takes a different one than a one day clock. Um but you it the Herbert Her systems they're different. This will not fit in there. It's too small. This is for a regular, regular system. As you can see, that's what it's supposed to look like when you take it all apart. We're going to start on the time side train. This is the time side train. You had the escapement wheel. And the escapement wheel is what comes off the verge and crutch assembly. You could tell the escapement wheel because its teeth are different from all the other teeth. This is the pinion gear on the escapement wheel. But the teeth on the escapement wheel is different from all other teeth. You want to verify that these teeth are in the same direction. If one tooth is missing, your clock is not going to stay running. If one tooth is bent differently than all the other teeth, your clock is not going to stay running. If one tooth is bent 
outwards or inwards, your clock is not going to stay running. So you have to look at all these teeth. This is the second wheel. It's connected to the great wheel. It's differently from all the other wheels on the time uh, strike side. And you have to inspect, again, all these wheels. If there's a tooth missing, or these teeth are jammed up between each other, your clock is not going to stay running. This is the great wheel on the time side for a one-day movement. It has the ratchet ratcheting system in it. Can you hear that? It click, 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 click. There's ratch different ratcheting systems for uh, uh, different clocks. This is the most common one for the modern clocks. There, are, there's a piece of wire here that comes off and it's bent downward to ratchet. If I'm going to bring this up close and I'll let you look at it. You see it just went down. It has one here and it has one here. If you can't easily wind your clocks, more than likely it's because this is bent up too far that it is having trouble catching the 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 wheel or it's bent down too much to where it's having trouble releasing and sometimes the very end of this piece of metal is broken off and so you only have one ratchet there are two ratchets on this so if one is broken off you got one ratchet left you can bend what is left by taking a screwdriver and sticking it underneath the far end of what is left of toward one of this cross piece sticking it underneath then taking another screwdriver and pushing down what is left and that will give you your second ratcheting system but if you bend it too much you have to easily be able to turn this wheel if you bend it too much unbend it some if you don't bend it enough it will not catch the teeth so pay attention to it this wheel right here is what catches this wheel right here that wheel is on what is called the Minutehan Arbor Wish Center Wheel this being the center wheel this is all fit together by this compression piece right here I don't take these apart I leave them as long as it's working it will get cleaned through uh, your cleaning process but I don't take it apart anyway this plastic wheel and most of them are plastic lines up with this wheel this is the great wheel. It's the first wheel. It's what starts the ball to roll. 
if this is broken, you can buy replacement wheels. If it is cracked, you can repair it as long as you follow the following instructions. If it's lightly cracked, take some liquid super glue and have some baking soda readily available so you can immediately put it on the super glue. Take some super glue and only put it on what the crack is. Then immediately sprinkle some baking soda on that super glue and then blow the rest of it off. There's a chemical reaction between the baking soda and the super glue that makes it glue immediately rock hard and I have successfully repaired some like that if that crack is all the way through it is best to replace the wheel you can try to squeeze it to close up the crack Put the super glue and then the baking soda on. Let go. It will immediately glue it. How well it, how long it will last, I cannot answer that for you. So if it's cracked all the way through, replace the wheel. Their compression fit on. You want to see what you would do is put the wheel, it, take all the stuff off, put the wheel on, on here, and then put all this together. I put it on the wrong spot, sorry. Put it on, put all this together, put the plate on, which will force it to where it needs to be. You can try to, uh, you can put it on and then put this together. And if it's lined up with this center wheel, great. If it's not, you could take a couple of pair of screwdrivers and push it down to line it up with that wheel but it has to be lined up just perfectly so anyway we talked about the great wheel for the time side plastic wheel we're done with the time side strike side we're going to go from top side down. Strike side, it's got a fly on it. Take the fly off, go like this. If that fan spins several times, it is too loose. Your cuckoo will cuckoo too fast, and therefore, you need to tighten up the wheel. The way you tighten up the wheel is you take this fan off, push this center arbor down some, and put the fan back on. Spin it if you can't go like this to where it moves a, a, a quarter to a half a rotation. You got it too tight. Your cuckoo will cuckoo too slow. Some people disagree with me on that, but so be it. Inspect this. When you, you know, when you're taking these parts off, you're inspecting it all. You're inspecting to make sure that there's no bent pivot. The ends is called the pivot. 
you're inspecting it to make sure there's no bent shaft. You're inspecting it to make sure these pinion gears are not broken. Third wheel with warning pen. This is the third wheel with warning pen. That warning pen is what I told you hits that stab tab on the rack stop lever. If this pen is bent, you uh, it should be 90 degrees to the wheel. If it's not 90 degrees to the wheel, you might want to straighten it out. It should not be loose. You go like this. It should not be loose. If it's loose, if you're good at soldering, um, put some solder on it, but make sure that you don't get any solder on any of these teeth that's on this wheel. And again, inspect the pinion gears, inspect the wheels to make sure that there's no broken or bent teeth this is called this is called the two armed bell crank and arbor sorry I had to look in the book for that I don't remember that and again, I got out the book, and it's got the diagram, and it's got the names of the parts. This is what um, uh, stops. Uh, sorry, this is what the um, cuckoo bird rod locking lever locks into. This is the great wheel for the strike side. Again, you want to check it to make sure it's all working. This, and I forgot to tell you on the other time side, this three-prong uh, compression washer is what tightens this wheel up. If I was to loosen these... If I was to loosen them all, I'm just going to do this for this video. The, um, the wheel spins easier than what it should be. So... This is how you take this thing apart also, but I'll fix that later. If you're, I forgot to tell you, if it's hard to turn, it might be this compression washer is too tight on this ratchet wheel. So uh, you might have to loosen them some. But again, inspect it to make sure that nothing's damaged. Set it to the side. Now this wheel here, which is called the second wheel with cam, I believe, stand by. It's just called the second wheel for the strike train. It has that cam that I told you I don't take off. So, I, I, again, that's up to you. The Cuckoo Bird Rod Locking Lever. It is held on place by an E-clip. And we'll go ahead and take that off. I don't normally take these off. I'm doing it for this video. 
pay attention to where it's at. It's between the Minna Arbor where center wheel and the second wheel. This is what it looks like. This post right here should be tight. I've experienced one movement where I was working on and this thing was not working properly. Come to find out this post was loose and they were just pinged in to the plate. I don't know if you can see that, but it's pinged in to the plate. So um, I end up because part of it was messed up, I ended up soldering it to the plate. It worked. This thing needs to drop freely on this post. And put it back on. When you're working on this movement and you go to clean it up lift this up let it fall lift it 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 up let it fall do that several times and as long as it's falling freely like that don't take it off it's the reason why I say don't take it off. You're going to forget, or maybe it's just me. You're going to put this thing all together. And then you're going to see this piece right here. And you're going to be like, uh, oh yeah, that piece goes on. So you got to take it all back apart just to put this piece on. It uses a certain E-clip. If you put the wrong size E-clip on there, then when you go to do this and it does not do fall freely like that, more than likely it's the E-clip you put the wrong size e-clip back on because you know we took several e or we should have taken several e-clips off in the process of taking this movement apart but because it has a hole take a toothpick to it always take a toothpick to every hole that you see and clean it out Because if it's dirty inside, if it's got rust inside, whatever, it's not going to allow it to drop freely. So, uh, So now I can put this back on with the E-clip. And that is all of the parts on a regular one day 25 movement. Front plate, rear plate. Sorry, there's also this post right here. This post most of the time is screwed in. You can unscrew it. But sometimes it's riveted in. In this case, it's riveted in. The wires need to be parallel with the ground. Do not loosen this post. As long as it's parallel with the ground, leave it alone. This is called the V wire that the pendulum leader wire uh, hangs onto. And this is the U wire. You could buy a piece. 
if your clock quit running, but it's in beat, and I'll explain in beat later on, it's probably because this U-wire has got a flat spot on it. It's a lot easier to replace these wires than to mess with these movements for an hour trying to figure out why your clock doesn't want to stay in beat. And they will get flat spots on them and stop your clock. But you can order these through Time Savers, 50 cents a piece. And you can order this post through Time Savers also. But for the ones that are riveted or um, pinged in, you probably have to drill them out, drill a hole, tap a hole. Uh, but um, do not mess with this post. You can order them. And if they... Uh, it's the same way with this uh, uh, Pac-Man I was telling you about. You take it off, put it back on, take it off, put it back on. You're going to wear it out. If you unscrew, if this was one of those that you could unscrew, and you put it back on, and you unscrew and put it back on, unscrew it, put it back on, you're going to wear it out. So leave it alone. Anyway, I hope you all liked this video. Leave me some comments. Uh, the next video we're going to be talking about is probably cleaning. God bless.